careful what you're saying because all this information is going to be recorded and is accessible um, by anyone. Okay, so, you know, uh, Artavia said a little bit about me. Um, fun fact, um, <laughs> both of my parents are from Jamaica. One is from Westmoreland, one is um, uh, raised in Kingston. Um, and uh, my family is deeply rooted in Jamaica. Um, my grandfather was heavily involved in the Manufacturers Association. Um, he had the company La India. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I've always been going to Jamaica from when I was little. So, you know, my love is there as well. Um, I actually just left there. Um, my uh, grandmother, who was 91, enjoyed a long, fruitful life, um, died a couple of weeks ago. So um, while I was there, it became so much more personal to me to deliver this webinar because um, I know for a fact that there's a need. I've spoken to some of the teachers there that I know personally, and I know that there's a need for a more advanced curriculum. So I'm hoping that not only you get something from this, but also you're able to share it with someone because it's very easy to share the information that I'm going to be giving you since I'll be giving you the resources for after, um, uh, for after, you know, when you're getting off the, the webinar. So I just want to thank everyone for taking their, their time out. Um, someone says the sound is distorted and the video keeps freezing. You may have to um, log out and log back in. I know that usually works for me. Or um, if it gets too bad, I think Zoom actually cuts it off and then restarts again. Um, let's see here. So, yeah, so, um, Ortavia had mentioned about, you know, Black Girls Code. I just wanted to say, so I don't have a long history of coding. I actually got into it by happenstance. Um, about, I don't know, 10 years ago, my church asked me to do a web page for them and I knew nothing about coding, so I got a book and started learning it little by little, but I actually started taking it seriously um, in 2016 and became a self-taught coder, and then went on to do some of the stuff that she mentioned. So for those of you who don't know what coding is, um, I'm just sharing my screen. All right, so coding is a, a set of instructions, and this is just a play to, to put it very simple. It's a set of instructions given to a computer, and it's used in technology in every way that you can, uh, you know, think that it's possible. So when you stop at a green light, when you use, um, when you use uh, something like Alexa um, or Echo, or when you go onto your web pages, um, when you get in your car, a lot of cars are electrical now. So all of this is happening because the, the um, technology, the, the programs are giving a set of instructions for the computer to do something. Um, and I wanted to give an example by way of um, like a microwave, for example. Um, so a code is a series of inputs to outputs. So for example, a microwave. When the door opens, the light turns on inside the, micro, the microwave. Um, if, the, if the microwave is going, the, the microwave turns off. So that's a set of instructions that the microwave gets to do something. So that's exactly what coding is. It, 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 it's a more, simple way to explain it. Um, there are more complex things that you can do with coding, but I'll just start you off with the simple right now. Um, I did want to share with you some behind the scenes. So, um, and I'll get into to that just a little bit of, about 
um, the complexities of coding. But for right now, I just wanted to share with you um, a behind the scenes of coding and what it looks like. So, so here is, and can can you guys all see that the the Yahoo page? Let me see. Since I can't see, <laughs> I can't see if they see it. <laughs> Yes, they can. Yeah. Oh, they can. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yes. All right. So this is the Yahoo page, and I'm going to X out of the behind the scenes. All right. So this is the Yahoo page. Um, very simple. Yahoo uses um, blocks for you to um, like clearly see the information. And this is what we call a grid in coding. Um, in order for you to see what lays behind that, all I do is just hit inspect. And then I can see some of the code that lies behind the screen. And I don't know why, but my computer is a little slow. We're seeing it. Yeah, I know, but my, my computer is not, uh, I'm sorry, the the thing that I'm doing is not, it's not doing it because it's just slow. Anyway, but if you look at it, it says like DIV, ID, all of that is code. So I just wanted to show you a simple way of to, to see what coding is. So this is what lies behind the websites that you're going to. Um, all websites use coding, whether it be um, a multiple languages, like uh, Yahoo is famous for using um, HTML, which is a hyper um, markup language. It's very, uh, it's one of the most basic langu languages of the web. And then CSS, which is cascading sheets. Um, that's one of the most basic languages of the, the web. And you don't need to know all of that right now. Um, you know, it's a whole learning process. Um, but I just wanted to let you know what you're seeing. And they also use JavaScript. Um, so those are like some really basic um, coding languages that uh, anyone can learn, okay? And let me go back to All right. So I showed you behind the scenes. Um, so I did want you to know, because I think it's important to say, so coding is just a small um, aspect of the broader field of what we call computer science. Um, computer science is the study of virtually everything connected to computers, theory, hardware, architecture, algorithms for solving various kinds of problems, um, logical structure, certain rules that govern and manage a computer system, and so forth. Um, computer science uh, and, and uh, fosters creativity, teaches students critical thinking skills to become proactive learners. No matter the age, it's a good time to introduce these skills. So no, no matter the age from, you know, from two, from when they're, when they're aware, to all the way up to 12th grade, um, you know, it's never too late to be teaching the concepts of computer science, which is just a small portion of what coding is. There's a lot more that goes into computer science. And I, I, I know I have seen, because I, I did a little research to see how many computer science teachers there are. Uh, and I know that there are some computer science teachers there. Um, I'm not sure if every school has computer science teachers, but it's a good thing to have. Um, let's see here. So what I just wanted to get into, because someone asked me, like, you know, do you need to know coding? And of course, you know, with everything, you don't need to actually know it, but it's a great thing to know. Because 
what are we teaching for if, if, if it's not to enhance the life of a student? So some of the benefits of coding is it boosts creativity, which I said about computer science. It gives new perspective to problem solving, logic and reasoning, which is a must have for the, for the jobs of the future. Um, careers have great earning potential um, and a lot of future job stability. Um, it teaches teamwork. A lot of the times the lessons are going to be in teams. Um, I think it's best when you have lessons that are teaching in teams. Um, the students learn presentation skills and there's a resiliency to learning. And so just to explain that part, um, you, when, when it comes to coding and learning any aspect of computer science, there has to be some type of resiliency, some kind of persistence um, to learning new concepts. Uh, because it's not, uh, when you get into like the basics of it, it may be easy, but sometimes because kids have not seen it before ever, um, they're going to probably want to be like, I don't want to learn this. But they have to have a resiliency to keep and continually learning, okay? Um, let's see. So I did want to talk about the demand as well. So I became a STEM advocate because um, at, at the time when I was, when I had started learning, they were saying that it was only about two or 3% of uh, programmers at the time or in STEM overall um, that uh, of, of black people in STEM occupations. Um, I think that number has gone up some, but not what, uh, not what we want. And we do need more diverse teams because when you're thinking about, we're now getting into automation, um, where you have self-driving cars, you have facial recognition, um, all the artificial intelligence, the augmented reality, um, these, are, these things are being used in our criminal justice system. Um, they're being used in our healthcare um, system. We, we, you know, you now have healthcare technology and especially, you know, just an example for the, uh, the facial recognition, um, the teams that created the, the facial recognition were not diverse enough. And the reason why they knew that is because when it came to identifying black people, they got it wrong about 90% of the time. So that tells you that whatever flaws that the programmers had, they gave it to the software. So it's important that teams be diverse and have all people of color diversity um, on their team so that they recognize mistakes as they're uh, creating these programs. Um, many jobs of the future do not exist yet. And that is worldwide. This is not, it's not just something that's happening in one part of the world. Um, a lot of jobs are due to disappear because of automation. So a lot of factory jobs, uh, you know, um, jobs that have menial tasks that are repetitious will be disappearing in the near future. And it won't be 30 years. We're talking about the near future. The demand for coders um, far exceeds the supply. It's projected to grow at a rate of 30% between 2010 and 2020. So that's twice as fast as most other jobs. All right. Um, so here's a picture, I, I just wanted to put that there of um, one of my workshops that I do at Black Girls Code, where um, the kids are learning by doing. Um, I don't know if anybody else can attest to this, but um, if you're a teacher, you know that the kids learn more um, when they are doing it beside you versus just a lecture, you're lecturing them and they're just staring into the air. They're probably distracted. They're probably thinking about what they're gonna eat later on. 
So um, we know that based upon research, that project-based learning is a proven alternative learning methodology to the, um, you know, compared to the traditional teacher-led um, lecture and memorization educational method that uh, we continuously have problems with right now. Um, I don't know if you keep up with Florida education, but um, one of the things that they have um, have tried to figure out for many, many years is this teaching to the test issue where um, the kids are just memorizing, but it's not really being applied. Um, so, you know, you only had, for, for many years, they had just teaching to the test, teaching to the test, and they found out that that method is not the best method. So we want our kids to learn by doing. And I did at the end, I wanted some time to ask you questions because I don't know what resources you guys have. So when I was creating this presentation, I wanted to keep in mind that you may have, um, uh, there may be a lack of resources. And if you do have adequate resources, um, that would be, I would be happy to hear about that. But just in case that you don't have access to like mobile phones, uh, laptops or desktops, there is still a way to teach coding um, without it. So one of the websites that I actually use in some of the workshops that I do is called CS Unplugged. Um, it's a collection of free teacher material that teaches computer science without the use of devices. And I did want to uh, show you, I did want to show you, Karine, you have a question. Um, the person is Galaxy Aids. Um, that's raising their hand. Okay. I don't know if you want to stop and take them. Sure. No, that's no problem. Let me uh, let me go back to. Uh, try, I'm trying I'm to look. Gonna to have her change her is. name. So oh, that. Where is the question? I asked her to change her name, but I don't see her anymore. So hang on a second. I'll find okay. her going and now find her. Oh, okay. Well, someone did add, I, I just wanted to address it. Somebody put, would the information presented be emailed to us after the webinar? Yes, I, um, I'm aware that these are recorded and you have access to them if you um, had signed up for the webinar. And I'm also gonna give a resource at the end. Okay. All right, so I'm going to share my screen so I can show you the CS Unplugged. All right, so here are, this is the CS Unplugged website. Anyone can access it. All the information on it is free. The only thing that you would need to do is if you have a lesson plan um, and you, you know, want to include these lessons that you would have to print it. So that would be it. But it's chock full of lesson plans, curriculum integrations. And that's just, you know, if you are, um, like an English teacher or phys ed, I don't, you know, I don't know what you guys call it, phys ed. Um, anything, any subject that you teach, coding can be integrated. Um, here you have the printables. Um, you can also look it up by the grade that you teach. You can um, see here you have the ages, five to 10. Um, the sorting networks. And then I wanted to also share with you some other stuff, but I'll, I'll get into that after we um, go to the next section. All right. 
So if you don't have devices, you start off with the code, uh, the, the code unplugged, um, coding unplugged um, website. But there's also what other websites that I'm going to include in my resources as well that you can start off with. Um, but if you do, if you know, because sometimes um, I, I remember when we first started with Black Girls Code, Black Girls Code didn't have their own set of devices. Um, so the kids would actually bring their laptops with them or their mobile phones with them. And then we use that for instruction or their parent um, lent their phone to them for the instruction. So if you have access to that, you know, if maybe the school has a set. Um, these are some of the lessons that you can learn with the devices. Um, and again, whether it's a phone, laptop, desktop, um, there are all kinds of exercises that you can use. Some of the lessons that you would want to start with, and this is just my recommendation, is drag and drop lessons, where you just have a block of code that's already completed, and they're just dropping that code into um, like an editor, which is uh, it's just a space, like a a, a, a layout that you would drag that code into and I'll show you on scratch in a minute where they can create something um, then you also have directed tutorials um, I am a big fan <laughs> of YouTube and when I tell you I have learned everything from YouTube I learned how to fix my van Kareen, we just lost you. You froze. Okay, I know you possibly can't hear her right now because I'm not hearing her either. Um, hang on just a second. Just a second. Okay, so we Sorry, lost I lost you guys. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Let me go back to sharing. Yeah, so I was telling my little story about how I saw something that um, I could have fixed for $5 and spent more money. So from now on, I'll be going on YouTube first before I go anywhere. Um, then you also have games and quizzes. Um, I don't know about anybody else, but that's the way I learn. I, you know, um, when I when I first started learning coding, I went on different websites and they had it like as a game or a quiz that you can learn from. They're fun because that, you have to have some fun in there when you're teaching um, such a serious topic. So make sure you have fun. Um, there are a lot of resources that use games and quizzes to teach your kids coding, and then you have programmable programmable bots. Um, I know that Microsoft um, Tinker is one. I'm not sure if anyone is uh, um, familiar with those, but they Microsoft, I know you know who Mic Microsoft is. Microsoft actually has a robot that they use to teach coding to kids. Um, and, you know, if for whatever reason, if, if your school can get uh, the funds or something to, you know, get a programmable pot bot, because not every student has to have one. I mean, you know, at, at Bad Girls Code, we have 50 students sometimes. Um, when we started doing programmable bots, it would be like two that we would divide in a group and the kids would program the bots to move or turn or twist or jump or whatever. Um, so, you know, it doesn't have, you don't need to have a lot of devices. You just need one really just to show them how to work, how it works because visuals, um, are so important in teaching, especially kids as an adult, you get bored easily. I know I do. Um, so the one thing, and, and, and I, I was going to move on to the, the, some of the resources that I have. And I'm going to show you in a minute the Scratch website. So my recommendation, if you're going to start with devices, 
The easiest one to learn that has lessons that are very easy to follow is Scratch. So you would just need to put in Scratch um, into your Google search box. Um, Scratch is a website has been up forever. And now they have it where you can do it on your mobile too, which is great because I mean, you know, most people I know have mobile phones. Um, it's a free programming language, an online community where you can create your own interactive stories, games, and animations. And then you have MIT Inventor. Um, the learning curve on MIT Inventor app is just a little higher than Scratch. So that's why I always go with Scratch as, you know, a, a, um, a break in to coding. Um, MIT Inventor, you can actually create things that you have to pay for. Um, I, 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 I actually created an app for a party on MIT Inventor, which was um, like a photo booth app where you could take pictures. Um, so, you know, it allows you to create more functional apps. Um, and that's an intuitive visual programming environment that allows everyone, even children, to build functionally, uh, fully functional apps for smartphones and, and tablets. And then I also, if at, if at all possible, that you can um, introduce Scratch and alongside of that, um, integrate some CS First. CS First is um, computer science first. This is what the CS uh, stands for. And it teaches computer programming and coding to your kids with a free CS First uh, curriculum. Um, and just a little bit about that before I move on to the Scratch website. Um, CS First has very easy to follow lesson plans that are permanent that you can um, integrate with your curriculum permanently. So it doesn't have to be, um, and let me just backtrack a little bit. So, um, you know what? No, I won't backtrack because that's my next slide. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you the scratch. All right. So this is the scratch um, website. Um, and for any of you familiar with scratch, it was invented by MIT, which is uh, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Um, and that, oh my gosh, that university has created so many free programs um, that can be integrated with education. It's ridiculous. I, I, I'm really grateful that they have been um, very uh, forthcoming with material for education because even here, um, a lot of the schools do not have funds to um, to fund their, their STEM programs. So MIT actually has uh, not just coding, but other STEM programs that you can um, integrate into whatever lesson plan that you have. And when I say STEM, I mean even about like, you know, agriculture, all kind of stuff. And if you go onto MIT's page, you'll see that they have just various things that you can use. They also have adult courses that you can take. So if you find that you yourself want to learn more about computer science, MIT actually has a free class that you can take online. But um, so here, you know, on the website, we have create stories, games, and animation, share with others around the world. So you can start creating here. And I don't know if it's going to allow me to go through this whole thing, because for some reason, my internet is really slow. Um, because I wanted to show you some of the drag and drop stuff. Okay, here we go. So, and just so you know, again, you don't have to know everything. <laughs> if you guys get stuck on something, you know, a lesson plan that you want to create, you can um, hit me up or you can go on YouTube. There are many, many YouTube videos about Scratch. So whatever you want to learn, whatever lesson plan that you have that you want to teach the kids, you can um, pull up a video on YouTube that'll teach you um, how to do certain things on Scratch. So when I was talking about the drag and drop lessons, this is exactly what I was talking about. So here you have 
the code blocks that you can move. And this is this white space that you see this little, uh, what is this, a cat or something? You can move, you can put the, 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 um, the blocks of code here. And then you have it where it says like sound and the cat says meow. And so what, it, what it's supposed to do, if you see the little cat in the right hand side, it tells the cat what to do. So remember all the way back when, when I said code is a set of instructions that you give a computer. So once you move the blocks into the editor, it makes the cat move. Oh, you know what they call it? A sprite. That's what they call it, a sprite. <laughs> um, so the cat is called a sprite is what it is. And so, I don't know if you can do this because I can't see the thing. Well, anyway, I just wanted to show you what it, I, I just wanted to show you what it looks like. Um, so you're not, you know, scared. Don't be, don't feel overwhelmed about, um, you know, learning new things. And I'm sure you guys aren't because, you know, you probably learn a lot of new things all the time. Um, so I just wanted to show you what that looked like. So my next thing was, how do you structure the lessons? So I gave you all these resources because all of these websites have different lesson plans that integrates with any subject that you're going to be teaching. So it's totally up to you because, you know, of course, we don't know what your schedule is or how much time you can have allotted to a lesson like this, especially if you're teaching a subject that is traditionally outside of the scope of like technology. Um, you would want to at least have about an hour or so to teach a lesson because, you know, I, 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 I teach kids all the time. Um, you know, you have to a lot in time for them asking a thousand questions. Because <laughs> if this is the first time that they're seeing this material, there's going to be lots of questions. Um, so you want to a lot in time for all of that and, in, in, and uh, for them to be curious and, and, and creative. The, you know, you may have some students who want to go beyond the lesson. So you want to have um, time for that. Um, if you want, and I know that a lot of um, teachers do this, where they may join, you know, two classes together to teach um, coding, where you have two teachers instead of one, um, you know, giving help and giving instruction, that's something that you can think about as well. Um, and I did want to remind you, don't be intimidated to teach something that you don't know about. Um, just try to stay one or two lessons ahead. Uh, you know, that, that's something, cause like there've been times when, um, cause I, I'm, I'm good in, in different languages, but say for instance, if someone wanted to um, ask me to, to, to teach like Python. I'm not that great at Python, uh, which is a, 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 a programming language. So instead I would just stay like one or two lessons ahead of um, the lesson so I know what I'm talking about. All right, and these are some of the resources that you can access um, afterwards. You have code.org that anyone can use. I started a, a list on um, GitHub. Um, GitHub is a open source uh, community <laughs> that you can post your projects, you can um, share, sh you can share projects with other people, you can look at other projects, other people can, um, what do you call it? Oh my gosh, I forget what you call it. People come together and they may create a project together and one person can update it. Um, it's just one big thing, it's like a container that holds all the files and anyone can update it, whoever's on the team. So that's what GitHub is. And then of course we have CS First. Um, is it that called Wiki? I'm sorry? 
a wiki wiki yeah i'm sorry what was the question no is it a wiki where they can add to online um not really because wiki is like just like words right okay yeah yeah so i i can you know we got time right <laughs> that i can show you we got like what 17 minutes let me show you what it looks like just so you know you know because that's maybe something that you are teaching the kids So this is my GitHub and um, I actually have like all kind of stuff on here. Um, so this is the one that I created, a beginner's guide to teaching coding. Um, but you can go on there and find anything. So, you know, it's a little harder to, to, to maneuver if you're new to it, but um, say for instance, you want to look up someone has some kind of um, hub for teaching coding. So here you go, you have someone who had a whole, you know, container about teaching kids programming, teaching kids programming, Java, um, teaching, teaching, I mean, it's going to be different things that pull up because I mean, it's not as good They're, you know, they're, 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 Filter process is not going to be good, as good as, but they're getting there. Um, so yeah, and let me go back. All right. So one of the things I always end my workshops with is, um, and I always tell the kids this, but I'm telling you to tell your kids this: um, encourage students to be creators and not just consumers. So, um, especially in, uh, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm comfortable amongst my people, <laughs> but especially um, in minorities, um, we're not pushed, we're not, you know, encouraged. And for, for a very long time, we didn't have the resources available to us to learn more advanced um, subjects like computer science and programming. Um, some of our schools still don't have like um, the higher level math um, that you would take, like physics, um, AP physics, AP computer programming, because a lot of that stuff um, will really get you ready for a career in programming. So encourage the students to not just be users of their mobile phone or users of a tablet that they have to watch YouTube, ask them to make something out of it, you know, ask them to go behind it and see what's in it, you know. Um, I didn't really start like taking apart computers and going behind to see what makes things tick until I got older. But now that I am so aware, I, you know, especially with my girls that I have, uh, I have two girls and I, I didn't even mention that. So. I have, I have three kids, one is 13, one is 19, and one is 21. And um, from, you know, because I started this probably when they were little, um, I encouraged them to go into STEM fields. Um, so one is actually graduating this May. She's gonna be um, an industrial systems um, engineer. Um, my 19-year-old is going into pharmacology, and my 13-year-old is very insistent. He wants to be an engineer, mechanical engineer. So I see that it works. You know, we have to encourage our children to take on more complex studies, um, to go into these fields that we're not, you know, uh, really represented in, because the future needs us. There needs to be more diverse teams um, that are creators of these programs. You know, it's uh, unfortunate right now that they're seeing that a lot of these programs, I think that, I think it was either Facebook or Google, I can't remember which one, that they had a program, an AI program that was running that would kick out women's resumes. 
Now, you know, just like the story that I told earlier about the facial recognition, how was that not caught when it was being created? You know, so, and, and just so you know, you know, when there's nothing random, there's nothing random at all about computer programming. Um, it's a reason why, you know, especially here in Florida, they don't have the, um, like a computer picking the lottery numbers because there's no such thing as random when it comes to computer programming. Computer programming is, is, is man-made. So anything that the computer is getting, any set of instructions that the computer is getting is man-made. So if I have flaws in me that, you know, maybe stereotype people or, um, you know, some kind of cultural insensitivity, um, that's going to be built into my programming. You know, it's the same way when you go on websites or go into a store. If you don't see pictures of black people, someone put those pictures up. You know, you got people shopping at your stores and you don't have a picture of the actual people who are coming into the shop. <laughs> it's the same thing with computer programming. So we need to encourage our students, our black and brown students to pursue these fields. Um, Kareen, mm -hmm. um, we probably should take some questions and then see. Okay. Them, like, yeah, I just saw it 49. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'm ready. I present Um, if you have a question, go ahead and ask. You did say how to ask a question. For somebody to actually put in something into the code. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. There's a feedback. Hold on. Yeah, I noticed. Is it okay for? Is it legal? I'm just asking from a legal perspective. Is it okay for? I think we lost her. I don't know what happened. We lost her. Yeah. Anybody yeah, else have a question? Go ahead. The... Yeah, um, Karine, are you hearing me? Yes, I hear you. Okay, good. Let me ask, um, is it legal for anybody who's writing a program just to do a stereotype and it's okay, you know, just from a legal perspective? I Just for say, I can write a program and I don't like a particular group and I can just put it in there just to block them and it's okay? Oh, yeah. The internet <laughs> is a wild, wild west. There's no real regulation of the internet like that. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, it's frowned upon. You know, I, I know that some of the standards that Facebook set um, just recently is the, the EU standards where you just can't put anything on there because people used to put all kind of false information about people online and they still do. Okay. And there's a question, can coding be incorporated in any subject area from Michelle yes. L? Yes. Some of the websites that I gave, the, the very ones that I showed you examples, um, have actually um, a curriculum integration where if you are an English teacher or, math, or a math teacher, it can be incorporated in any kind of subject. And I mean any subject. I've seen it. So yes, it can be done. Okay. Can Scratch be used offline? Um, that I'm not sure of, but um, if you can't use Scratch, then you can use the code, the coding unplugged. CS, I'm oh, sorry, CS unplugged, not coding unplugged. CS unplugged. Nephew. Um, Somebody put that nephew. I am a business teacher. Michelle, Michelle, you can you can unmute and speak, Michelle. Okay, so okay. someone put what are some? 
Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead and now address. Um, is it a Nancy's? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Adrian. Go ahead, Michelle. Okay, because um, I am trying to use um Google Classroom and Moodle because to make make life easier for the kids and for my You said Moodle. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, Moodle and um Google Classroom. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm trying to incorporate that in um in my class, my classes, mm -hmm. to make things easier. Um, instead of make if instead of me marking eighty papers, at least the students could do work online and then send it back to me, and it mm -hmm. is marked. So um, that's why I was asking if it was possible to use it in any subject area. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean. Um, so you're saying that they're writing papers and then sending it to you on there? Mm -hmm. so that's why I use Moodle also. So, so how, how, how would you, what is your desire and like how you would integrate something like this? I am, I am not sure because with, with the Google, with Google, Google Classroom, put the test on there and the students do the test online and submit and then it is marked. With Moodle, um, use the Moodle um, platform and the students log in and they do the work, submit it, and then you mark it and they get back the grade. Um, Michelle, I can answer. I can give you an idea because I use Google Classroom. One of the things I do is I, I, use, I use Scratch in my classroom. I get the link from Scratch and I put it on Google Classroom and then that becomes an activity that the students will do. And then it's easier access for them and also for me to see their work because it's like click on each individual work, takes you over to Scratch and back again. I'm glad you answered that because I'm sorry I didn't know what she was asking. Yeah, Google Classroom is a platform that you can actually have a virtual classroom with your kids, even though you're- Right, right. Yeah, classroom. I'm familiar with that, but I, I didn't know what she was doing. With the link. Yeah, you just bring the link over from scratch, make it accessible for the students to get on, do their work, and turn it into you that way so you could see progress. Okay. Yeah, and um, as a business teacher, if you don't mind me asking, um, what are your main concepts that you're teaching? Um, as in the stick area? I'm sorry, can you say that one more time? As in the sub area? Yeah, like what are your main concepts that you teach in the business class? All right, so the art and office administration, they are taught um sound control their operations management um communication um travel arrangements it's a, lot of, it's a lot of topics they covered in our administration whereas in principles of business they have to know who's an entrepreneur they look at legal aspects of business they look at um technology integration um the role of government so it's a, a lot of different topics yeah because so the reason why i asked is because you know, something that you could probably integrate with your classroom is for them to make a web app, a, a web page, a static one page app to promote a business. I, I've done that before okay. with one of my workshops. Or you can create a classroom economy through that where they actually mm -hmm. integrate with each other, collaborate on a project like, um, okay, you have to build a community from scratch. What are the things that are necessary? They can talk it out and then create, go to scratch and create from there. Right. Well, we can talk more about that if you're interested because I have a project like okay. that going on. So you can reach out to me and I can help you with that one. Awesome. And I wanted to answer uh, a Nancy. She put, um, what are some strategies that can be used to motivate students to embrace coding? And I just wanted to make sure what 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 is the grade range that you teach? Grade five. I'm sorry. Can you say that one more time? Grade five. Grade five. Oh, okay. So one of the biggest things that you can teach them is if you learn how to code and if you get good at it, you can make a lot of money. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sandra Francis has a uh, question. Go ahead, Sandra. 
Right. I, I am looking at my science class now. I teach grade five. And I'm thinking right now, I'm doing like food chain, I'm doing nutrition. How could I incorporate coding into it? So the children are natural towards technology. So doing coding would be fun. How could I incorporate that in my lessons now? Oh, you can do a calculator. Um, and, and that's something, you know, if, if, if you have devices available to you, they can create um, a calculator for like nutrition. So um, or a fitness app. Let right. them create the app. They're big on apps right now. Yep. Okay, great. Thanks. What about the algorithm? Couldn't they create an algorithm on nutrition? Thank you. I like the ideas. I'm just welcoming them. Thanks. Yeah, the, the algorithm goes hand in hand. Um, but, you know, I, I, I don't know the level, um, but the because an algorithm is basically a set of instructions, but it's in plain English and then you translate it into code. All right. So it's she's doing nutrition. Um, there are different steps to the nutrition process. Right. So I'm saying that she could create the algorithm on the different steps. You're just, you're just showing them the basics. We're not that deep because we are, we are trying to stick to the grade level. And then afterwards. I'm glad you guys are liking the scratch. Oh, how good is Code Academy? So that's one of my favorites. I love Code Academy. You can learn anything on there. Um, it depends on what grade, though, because, um, you know, if, if your kids are little, they may get bored with it. What about persons who are not computer savvy? How does coding work, especially in our Jamaican context? Some of us don't even have Internet access. So that's where the CS Unplugged um, comes in where um and and just so you know my first i'm sorry keep going i'm i'm looking for that person to mute now oh okay um so when i first started learning how to code um i would write my code down so there's nothing wrong with you know um kind of coding on paper first um a lot of the initial learning that you do with computer science is from the ground up learning about computers the computing system the first languages um binary numbers all of that can be done on paper udemy is good but um once you go past a certain level, you didn't have to pay for it. So I don't ever use Udemy. I want everything free. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling you, I've never paid for anything that I've learned. So. Yeah. Okay, I, you I use Code Academy to teach grade six class. Yeah. That would be around the age that I would probably introduce Code Academy. Oh, okay. I'm glad. I'm glad that you're going to try those websites to find new strategies. Um, and it, any of the, the resources that I named, they're all just chock full of visuals and fun activities so that the kids don't feel like it's a drag to learn. Um, Stacy Ann says that her Wi-Fi is going in and out. I'm sorry. Does anybody else have any questions? I know it's 4.02 now. Are we going to do this again? So I would love to start a series on where we can get into um, more details, um, you know, especially with um, some of the coding languages. Um, so, you know, we'll see from here, but yeah, I, I don't have a problem. More classes will be rolled out. Um, you can look out for the registration links to her series. It, we'll talk more about that and then set the dates and then you guys will be able to have access to it. 
Thank you so much, um, everyone. Uh, this has been a fun session for me. Um, hopefully I get to know some of you guys. Uh, if you want to reach out to me, include it in the presentation is... We're losing you again, Karine. My Twitter handle, my Instagram handle and my Facebook. I actually have an organization that I show and children coding. Um, Mass Code is a nonprofit. Um, Kareen? Uh oh, I think we lost her again. Um, oh someone asked about early childhood education. Um, it's Kids know coding. I have a six-year-old. She's been knowing how to use an iPad and how to access different programs since she was probably two and a half, three. It's just how much you introduce them to, but you start with steps. I know that Scratch is great for beginners and not just for the teachers, but for the students as well. And, and that goes for early childhood education. You present them with a phone or an iPad or something. It could be one platform and they work collaboratively. As with everything in teaching, depending, the lower the kids are, the more input from the teacher. So you can actually use one device with your entire class and plan it out in stages. And then give them a group access if you have a computer lab. If you don't have a computer lab, just fine. One device. Kids work collaboratively to create one project and um, it, it will work just the same. The, the whole point of it is to give them access to something that is going to work for them in the future in terms of development of a career path, development of something that um, can formally help them throughout their educational life and development for something that is applicable to their day-to-day -day life. And that's the, the point of coding. Like she mentioned in the beginning, we're thinking about the future and a lot of the whole, remember Free Zone Factory? I don't know how many of you remember Free Zone Factory, but everybody used to work at Free Zone Factory. I remember I could hardly get to school on the bus because Free Zone people would pack it up. And as soon as the bus gets to Free Zone, everybody gone. You know, and uh, all the schoolers who need to get to Kingston and to half a tree can't get on a bus to get to school. Well, that factory closed down, right? Or, or just basically, became, I don't know what it is like now to tell the truth because I haven't really paid attention to that, but some, what, some, somebody on here is gonna tell me what happened to Free Zone Factory. <laughs> and there've been like others, you know, um, that closed down because they have machines that replace them. Now with automation, you know, at its highest peak right now, we know what's going to happen with, um, with the need for kids knowing how to code. That is a job of the future and it's very present right now that, that it's turning over already. And true story, my, my, my aunt told me that way back when, I don't, I don't remember when, but she said when ATM machine first come out, she was here in the US and she was looking at it like, what the hell is this? And why is it here? And I'm not trusting no machine with my money. I'm not using no plastic card. If it's not coin or paper, it's not happening. But look what happened now. How many of us really are use cash today, you know? So it's something that is very relevant and we need to teach the kids because we're trying to prevent, to, to, to present a child that is ready for worldwide academia and worldwide application of knowledge. So give it to your two-year-old, give it to your one-year-old, use them phone, let them kids sneaking underneath the desk while you exactly. teaching. Yep. They have it underneath the desk playing with, use those phones. Give them that opportunity to use it, to learn. Exactly. Welcome back, Kareen. I feel like <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, you know, I wanted to tell you, so they said a thing about the factory. My uncle worked at a factory that they used to make school lunches, and he got laid off two years ago. Because, mm -hmm. you know, things went automated at the factory, so, yeah. Yeah. It happens. So that should answer the early childhood education question. Let me see. 
Do we have any other ones that we didn't get to? Yeah, I just wanted to iterate. So um, uh, reiterate that you're going to see my information on the presentation. Um, I am Kareen 17 regular, but my coding, um, my coding uh, moniker is coder KS, coder mm -hmm. underscore KS. Um, Cause if, if you follow me like on Instagram or mm -hmm. Twitter, all everything that I do is about technology, STEM advocacy, everything like that. I'm actually trying right now, um, you know, and I don't mind saying it because I am going to execute it one way or the other, trying to bring a black girls code workshop um, to Jamaica um, to make it like a yearly thing. Um, but I also saw that Microsoft has an hour of code in Jamaica too. So I don't know if you guys have ha have ever seen that before, but that's something that you can um, participate in whether or not I um, you know, whether or not you're uh, actually going to like something outside of the school. Michelle just said something that is very important um, that phones are not allowed in school. They're not allowed in my school, but I'm the rebel. So I go to my <laughs> admin and I say on this day, I need all the students to access their phone. I will take responsibility and make sure that the phones are checked before it hits the yard at a certain time, but the kids are gonna use it today. Be the rebel, be the advocate. You're in charge of your students. Your voice is bigger than your principal. No offense, um, my friend over here, Garth. <laughs> but, None taken whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, the principals need to hear you, the teachers, because you are the wheels. You make things happen. So when your ideas come up, you got to have a rationale behind it. If it sounds reasonable, there is not one principal who's going to say no to you because their ultimate goal is success in their school as well. Exactly. If you, can, if you can implement a structure that is going to be successful, over and done with. They're going to say yes. Make it that day of the week. Um, someone had mentioned, um, there's two questions that I want to answer in one. Will coding be beneficial to challenge learners? And there are some students who are very slow to catch on to concepts. So um, what I've learned in some uh, um, environments uh, oh. is that um, we, you Hi. may have students, <laughs> um, you may have students who are um, slow to catch on in like English. But then when it comes to coding, it's totally different. They're ahead of the game. So the mm -hmm. only thing that you can do is introduce those concepts to them and see how they take to it. And I just wanted to make sure that you know, so you know, for a student that is slow in learning concepts, it doesn't mean that they're not gonna get it. It's just gonna take a little bit longer. And you know, you just have to say to them, well, you know, maybe you can go on to something else to enhance your learning when you're at home if they have access to it just to help them get over some of those hurdles. And um, to challenge learners, I mean, coding is something that is really great if you want to challenge, so yes. And students learn best from each other in any case, and with computers and, and that kind of thing, they're going to catch on from each other just as fast, faster than you can stand up there and teach it to them. Um, Val Valerie, it says students' interests play much in their learning. Think the boys will like this? Are you at an all boys school? Boys, of course. Valerie? <laughs> She said, no, I'm not. <laughs> the, it, so I just wanted to tell you. So um, we have to change a narrative with our girls. We have to push them into STEM as well. Um, that's the whole concept behind Black Girls Code is because um, we, you know, the boys may get a small computer, you know, when they're young and the girls get Barbie dolls. But we should be introducing both boys and girls to um, STEM because remember, as I said, um, we need more diverse teams. It's not about just skin color, but also gender as well. Um, women are the shoppers in the family. I mean, you know, until we get to a point where it's like 50-50, most women do the shopping. 
And there's so much um, technology and shopping nowadays that we need to be represented as well when it comes to programming. So we need to be, um, you know, advocating that to our girls as well. Valerie, you can unmute and talk. Yeah, I'm just saying that the boys are normally left behind. And um, most of the times, even when you look at university levels, you have more girls than, you know, more females than males being admitted. So if we can get them interested, if we can generate the interest, if we can capture them, then that too would be good for them as okay. well, you know. So a trick to teaching boys, because they, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and I was saying empowerment for the males as well. All right. So one of the things that you can try with the boys, I mean, because you can teach them both the same concepts, but you can tell the boys to start trying to create games. Yeah. So, you know, although we would love to teach them all at the same rate, um, boys navigate towards gaming. And that's something that they can um, learn, you know, they, they, it would motivate them more, the gaming part of it. So, you know, maybe that's something that you can um, introduce to them because there are um, a bunch of programs that you can create small games. It's like game apps. Yes. yes. All right. So we have time like for one more because it's already 1.14 before we wrap up. Anybody? Anyone? All right. So thanks everyone for signing in. Remember that you have 24 hours to complete the survey before we're able to um, issue your certificate. If you do it right now, I'm going to try to get some of them out right now. Whoever is, is, um, has completed theirs within the next hour. Otherwise, you know, it takes one week for us to deliver your certificate to you. We want to say thank you to Kareen, of course, for taking the time um, to share this with us. Um, it was excellent, and I'm sure you guys gleaned a lot from it. And I'm hoping to get some feedback at some point from all the others who have actually um, took this to their classroom and to their school and implemented it. Thank you. Thank you so much. And if you guys ever want to give me feedback or comments on anything that you learned here, um, as I said, you can reach out to me on any of the, um, the social media um, methods that I've listed. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle, I'm waiting for you before I, I close out. Just send me your email right here and I will um, respond to you immediately. All right, got it. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome.